Fly beyond. Do you all know what would happen if I drop this pen? No. You fall down. Yes. But is there a place instead of this falling down, it will float up? Yes. Yes, float up in space. As there is no gravity in space, the pen will float up. Have any of you ever experienced zero gravity? No. I had the chance of experiencing it in Russia last summer. Yes, I was all geared up and I was waiting with my instructor in front of a huge glass chamber. Then he told me to go into it. Then suddenly a huge gush of air just pushed me to the top. In seconds, I was parallel to the surface of the earth. I was floating. This is my experience on zero gravity. I recall an incident with my grandfather. We had gone to Kumbakona to see the Navagraha temples. After visiting each temple, he told me the name of the part the temple depicted and then told me that each temple represented a celestial body in the solar system. I wondered how ancient Indians knew about the planets even when telescopes were not invented. In Surinath temple, which is, which is dedicated to the sun god, the sun rays falls on the deity on a Rata Saptami day on a vernal equinox. This marks the birth of summer or the harvest season in India. This also happens in Konak temple in Orissa and Modera temple in Gujarat at the same time. When I was seven years old, I, I gave a talk on zero gravity in my school. I learned that our ancient mathematicians Aryabhata and Bhaskaracharya were well versed in astronomy and they had discovered zero gravity over 1,500 years ago. Bhaskaracharya has even given a sloka on zero gravity. Akrishta shaktishya mahi tayat kashtam guru swabhimukam swasaktya akrishyate tat patati vabhati same samantat va patatit vayam ke It means that all objects fall on the earth due to a force of attraction which keeps the earth, moon, sun, stars and constellations in their orbit. This is the Gurutva Karshan Shakti or the gravitational force. When I was 9 years old, my dad had gone to NASA. When he came back, he told me about the Apollo space missions, shuttle launches, propellers, thrusters and gave me a lot more information. I was very surprised when I learned that NASA was directly inspired by R. Vimanika Shastra, written by Rishi Bharadwaja over 7,000 years ago. He is written about machines that fly in the air, Pushpaka Vimana and which fly in space, Shakuna Vimana and about mercury propulsion, designing of spacecrafts, space suits, eating food in space and even becoming invisible. The same year, Dr. Mayil Sami Annadurai had come to our school. He gave a talk on the ancient Indian science. Then my dad got me a Celestron Astro Master telescope through which I stargazed. Because of which my interest in space travel multiplied. I also remember one of our ancient Sanskrit scholars named S. B. Talpade who had invented an aircraft in 1895 named Shakti which flew up to a height of 1,500 feet. He also demonstrated it in front of a huge audience in Chaukati beach of Mumbai. 
I thought that if ancient people could do so much, why can't I do something in the field of space? My interest peaked. Realizing my interest, my parents sent me to Russia to learn about space. First, we visited the Moscow Aviation Institute. There, the professors told us about their teaching methods, rocket engineering and space research. We were also allowed to interact with the university students there. I was able to see satellites which had gone to space and had come back. Second, we visited the Russian space center, Roscosmos. There are over 250 cosmonauts have been trained and have been sent to space. I was able to meet cosmonaut Shalishan Sharipov, a person who had stayed in space for more than six months. I was able to have my doubts clarified. Does space have an end and do black holes exist? We were also allowed to see him in one of his training sessions in the simulations. I found out that living in space was very difficult. We couldn't bathe there and we had to eat vacuum dried food. One of the easiest exercises on earth is one of the strangest in space. Yes, it is sleeping. If you wanted to sleep in earth, you just go jump on a bed and sleep. But it is not the same in space. First, you have to strap your back to the wall or the ceiling of the spaceship. Then you have to get into it. Then you have to zip yourself up and attach your head to the, to the wall and allow your neck to relax. Only then can you sleep. Sometimes if you don't tuck your arms inside, in the morning you might see one floating in front of you and you'll be like, whoa, what is that? Until you realize that it's your own arm. <laughs> we were also allowed to try the simulations. One of it was docking a spaceship to the International Space Station and another one was to ha repair uh, parts in space. We had to wear huge gloves to handle those minute parts. And I couldn't imagine doing the same in zero gravity. After this experience, I decided that I should do something in this field and that I should become a space scientist. I want to make space more reachable and affordable for everyone. If you all think I, made a, I might go under a lot of problems to, solve, to do this, as a coin has two sides, there are always two ways for a problem to be solved. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade out of it. Steve Jobs has said that when you innovate, you make mistakes. It is best to admit them with, and get on with improving your other innovations. Tiruvalluvar, an ancient Tamil poet, said in one of his Tirukurals that the earth is spherical. Suvandrum erpinnadu ulagam adanal urudum ulave thalai. It means that no other occupation is better than agriculture in the spinning globe. He knew that the earth used to spin and was spherical over 2000 years ago. Space science has helped, helped us improve our knowledge about the earth, atmosphere and outer space. It has helped in the development of many fields like education, communication, health and disaster management. For example, I am giving a TEDx speech here in Chennai, but you are able to view it all over the globe thanks to satellites which are in space. And now, my hero, my inspiration, my space god, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam sir, has played an important role in the Indian space science. I had the chance of meeting him when, in 2014 when he had come to our school. He asked me what I wanted to become and I told him that I wanted to become a nanoscientist. I have heard Kalam sir's speeches and about how he, say, how he says that nanoscience is very much helpful in space science and health. He has also spoken about how space research is useful in fields like renewable energy from space, moon-based solar power stations, faster travel to space and reusable spacecrafts. The space research nowadays is growing very fast. The European Space Agency is planning to send a satellite named Cheops to explore exoterrestrial planets 
which will determine whether it can suit human life or not. The NASA's New Horizon satellite had reached Pluto and its moon Charon in 2016 and is now traveling to, towards the Kuiper belt which is the outermost part of the solar system. It will reach there by 2019. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, Hayabusa 2, will be reaching the JU-3 asteroid into the first half of 2018. After it reaches there, it will launch sensors which will go collect data on the asteroid which is useful for determining the origin of life. The Indian Space Research Organization will be sending Chandrayaan-2 to the moon in 2018 to find about its origin and its evolution. But this is being done only by governments and their space agencies. I want this to be the dream of every individual on this earth. We cannot go to a country near us by flight in one or two hours. But I want space travel and interplanetary travel to be at the same time. According to modern science, we, the speed of light is 3 lakh kilometer per second. Even if we can't reach that speed, if we just travel one-fifth of the speed of light, we can reach Mars within an hour. I will like to invent such a machine which travels at that speed and it will have the best technology so people don't need to wear space suits and it will have artificial gravity, so people will have a hassle-free travel. If we can reach Mars within an hour, Mars will not only be a tourist spot, we can go there for daily work and we can come back. <laughs> like we are visiting the Navagraha temples in Kumbakonam in one day, we might be able to visit all the nine planets of the solar system in one day. Who knows, I might be even giving a TEDx speech in Mars in the next few years. But thinking about space travel, we shouldn't forget about our own mother earth. Yuri Gagarin, the first cosmonaut in space, said that, I saw how beautiful the earth is. I saw the clouds and the dark shadows on the distant earth. The, wa the water was darkish, slightly gleaming spots. A light blue orange surrounds the earth, which gradually darkens, becoming turquoise, dark blue, violet and finally cold black. I enjoy the rich color spectrum of the earth. People, let us preserve and increase its beauty and not destroy it. Let us fly beyond and conquer the galaxies. Thank you.